Hey, what's up, guys? You're back with Young Grace Predictor. Today, I'm going to talk about the Portuguese Grand Prix predictions of the year 2021. Now, in the previous video, I talked about Imola, and um, we haven't seen the race yet because today is 11th April, and I'm looking forward to the Grand Prix here in Imola and even the Portuguese Grand Prix because the video I'm making right now, I hope the predictions come um, very well. But for now, let us just stick to uh, what is uh, written in, in my uh, list. So, as always, I'll be talking to you about the qualifying grid, why it'll happen, who will be the pole position of the Portuguese Grand Prix, including the driver of the day. And then the winner of the Grand Prix, including the person who will score the fastest lap and even the podium. But I will also be talking about the DNFs, which was newly brought in the previous video as well. So let's get started. Firstly, with the qualifying grid. Now, um, as the uh, Imola Grand Prix is still not started yet, I'll still be going back to the preseason testing days and even the Bahrain Grand Prix, how it went. And I'll be talking more about why will that person um, get the exact position. Now first, as always, let us go back to the last five. And this time, according to me, I feel Russell will be kicked out in Q1 itself. He'll finish in 16th place. And the reason being that it's so obvious both the horses are also going to go out. Because firstly, they are new new runners in the entire grid. in And they need to know more about the... Uh, season so they will be finishing in like 18th 19th or something for me Mazepin will finish last Schumacher will finish in 18th Latifi will be separating both the horses I feel he will go a bit slower than the Haas as well Raikkonen will finish in 17th and Russell in 16th the reason why I'm saying that uh, Giovinazzi could not finish in 16th or Raikkonen cannot finish in 16th is because for uh, and Russell going into Q2 is because now we had seen when uh, um, Vettel and Ocon got out because of the spin uh, of uh, Nikita Mazepin in the uh, Q1 and the engine problem uh, that resulted in the um, time lapse of uh, uh, Vettel and Ocon they had to be kicked out of uh, in Q in Q1 itself. So th those were the reasons and. Uh, and moreover, even if that wa uh, there was a different reason for that, the Alfa Romeo car was able to go and finish in like uh, uh, 12th and 13th place or somewhat like that in the entire grid. So uh, that's that's why I feel that Giovinazzi and Raikkonen, uh, in that Giovinazzi will be ahead of Raikkonen and will go into Q2, Russell will be kicked out in Q1 itself. It will be Russell, Raikkonen, Mick Schumacher, Latifi. And the last uh, person on the grid, Nikita Mazit. Now, coming to the next five, it will be Stroll, Alonso, Sonoda, Vettel and Giovinazzi. Now, we have seen that the Aston Martin car was not fast as how I had expected. Um, Stroll was able to get into Q3, but, uh, but then uh, Vettel wasn't. And even if there was a problem like that, Vettel would have still been kicked out. Like, we remember how his season had been with Ferrari last year. Terrible. So, I feel Vettel is finish in like four, 14th place in front of Giovinazzi because um, Giovinazzi is an Alfa Romeo and I feel Alfa Romeo is definitely not faster than Aston Martin. We could easily see that in Bahrain. So, I feel Vettel will finish in 14th. Sunoda will finish in 13th ahead of Vettel. Firstly, because there are other better players who could go ahead of him. Secondly, Sunoda, who is new to the season and new to the grid, he uh, his qualifying effort is... Uh, should be appreciated a lot and um, when when it comes to Vettel in the Aston Martin I feel Sonoda can play much more uh, can um, uh, has a much more faster car and can go ahead of Vettel therefore I feel Sonoda in 13 but he'll be behind Alonso and Stroll because uh, Stroll, uh, Stroll is driving very well with the Aston Martin car he has like enough control over it and uh, Alonso he's back to the a season with a championship winning car he's um, uh, playing with the car in fact and um, that's why I feel that, um, that they, uh, those two could be kicked out in Q2 as well Ocon will come into Q3 the reason why I'm feeling the Stroll won't come into Q3 is because um, he's come with Aston Martin the car has changed completely I don't know um, like uh, exactly but it, it has changed completely he has to adapt to the new car like how um, uh, Force India had changed to Racing Point. Spiker, I think, 
whatever name that was, it changed to Force India. So uh, that's that's why I feel that Stroll and Vettel could be kicked out in Q2 itself. Alonso will also be kicked out of Q2 uh, in the Alpine, but Ocon can get ahead of Alonso. I feel he uh, he now knows all the mistakes that he has made in the uh, last year, Esteban Ocon, and therefore I feel he will finish ahead of Stroll and Alonso and come into the top 10. Now, the top 10 is Verstappen on pole, ahead of Hamilton, Bottas and Perez, Leclerc in 5th, Norris, Ricardo, Gasly, Sainz in 9th and Ocon in 10th. Now, Sainz is, um, is uh, in a new car, uh, Ferrari, and I, I feel that uh, Ferrari have improved a lot in Q2, Bahrain, um, they topped the entire session. Um, uh, so I feel Science will finish in ninth place, uh, the, uh, because uh, Gasly is again with his AlphaTauri car. He is play the car and knows all the uh, all his strengths, weakness, and can play very well with AlphaTauri. Ricardo is new to the team as well, but McLaren is as fast as Ferrari, and they play they the drivers as well. Ricardo and Norris they play very well. Therefore, I feel Ricardo will be ahead of Science and other players. Whom, uh, whom we can see they have already been uh, uh, they have already played with that car uh, another difference is Perez but Red Bull is has, uh, is fast so I feel Perez will also be ahead ahead of Ricardo and Sainz and Sainz will be the left one so he will be in the ninth, Ocon in 10th now Gasly will be ahead of Sainz because uh, he is an Alphatari it's a faster car than uh, Carlos Sainz uh, Carlos Sainz's Ferrari and moreover he knows how the car works Pierre Gasly in fact to be fair he has even won a Grand Prix with the same car so I feel Gasly will be ahead of Sainz then it will be McLaren it will be Norris ahead of Ricardo um, because he knows the car very well Norris Ricardo it being his first year and uh, Norris um, he finished on the podium with McLaren itself in the first race of the season in 2020. So that's why I feel Norris will be ahead of Ricardo. Leclerc will be in fifth because last year in Portugal he finished fourth and then having a bad start to the race with Raikkonen ending up like seven to eight places. He was able to get, uh, give a comeback like how Verstappen did and was able to catch up and come to a fourth pace. So I feel he'll finish in fifth, not in fourth December because Sergio Perez is now in Red Bull. So I think Perez will be uh, play, uh, will be uh, faster than uh, Leclerc, uh, and uh, Perez will finish in fourth. Now again back to the top three. It is always Verstappen, Hamilton, Bottas, Hamilton, Verstappen, Bottas. Now the reason why I think Verstappen will be on pole is because we had seen Bahrain. Surprisingly, Verstappen had taken pole and Bahrain um, for Red Bull. Um, they they came on poles uh, in Bahrain for the first time since 2013. Which is such a big achievement. So I think um, the the car is much more faster than Mercedes. By the way, the reason why Hamilton was able to win the Grand Prix was because they had come up with a very very good strategy. And especially when it comes to Hamilton, he knows um, what to do, what not to do. When it comes to any player, uh, no matter whoever is on the grid, and he they uh, whoever is like a big rival to him, to Hamilton, like for example, Bottas, Verstappen. Sometimes even Leclerc, but now that the car has gone a bit slow, that, uh, that's why. So he has a lot of drivers on the grid. So he will know how to make his own, how to make the strategy and follow it in order to win the Grand Prix. But as this is a qualifying grid, I think Verstappen will be on pole ahead of Hamilton and Bottas. So this is my qualifying grid. Now when it comes to the race day, the winner is Verstappen. Now Verstappen is with Red Bull. The Red Bull, as I told, is faster than the Mercedes and. If Hamilton wins the Grand Prix, it'll it'll be uh, it would be fair enough. But the reason why I think Verstappen will finish first is because uh, Red Bull will have a very good start to the season. Um, in fact, they already had a very good start to the season. Verstappen on pole, and he finished in second place in the race. Imola, according to my predictions, he'll finish in second place in the race as well. So Red Bull will be on top. Verstappen will win. Um, Red Bull's first um, uh, Grand Prix of the year 2021. Verstappen will win the Portuguese Grand Prix. Hamilton will get the fastest lap. And the podium, Sergio Perez is on the podium. Now with Red Bull, we have seen Leclerc. He um, he started with Ferrari in 2019. First race, he finished fifth. Second race, he was already on pole and he finished in third. 
So I think Perez can do like that as well, especially with Red Bull as such a fast, with such a fast car. I think Perez will be third behind Hamilton, who will take the fastest lap. The driver of the day will be Sebastian Vettel because last year in Portugal, he st- uh, with the Ferrari itself, a uh, very slow car from 15th, he was able to bring the car to 9th or 10th. Now with Aston Martin, I think he can gain much more places and finish in like 7th or 8th. So, and the Vettel is a very experienced player. So, I think Sebastian Vettel will be the driver of the day. DNFs maximum will be, there will be 2 DNFs. So, this is my predictions. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you click the subscribe button and even hit the notification bell for more upcoming videos. This will be the Portuguese Grand, uh, Grand Prix predictions. Previous was Imola. Before that was Bahrain, but the race was already over. More predictions are uh, going to come. But until then, next time.